Time once again for Ask the Doc, our veterinary segment with our good friend, Dr. Sandu from All Creatures Veterinary Center in Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital, Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital located on Solid Ed Canyon in the Edwards uh, Cinema Shopping Center there, or complex I should say, and All Creatures Veterinary Center located on Lyons Avenue just west of Bain Street in the Victorian buildings there. Really cool place. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Now, a uh, couple things. I'm already getting some questions here and uh, trying to work this one out. Uh, uh, Ms. Paterna has a uh, Paterno has a dog that is overweight, but she was inquiring like about rehab therapy or are there, I guess, like fat camps for dogs or anything like that where dogs can actually go somewhere to lose weight? Or is this more just like maintaining your dog's own health and weight on your own? I think this is more like maintaining your dog on your own first, start giving them some more, have, have them check before, you know, like depends upon the size of the dog, breed of the dog, and then figure it out why it's overweight. And then there are different ways to, with the food, that's one of the things you can control if people are feeding a lot of table scraps or leftovers and leave food out there all day for them to as a free feed, that can also contribute to that. And there are dogs I know that uh, some some know when to stop and some don't. So yeah. that's the one thing you notice too. And especially, I know it's so convenient sometimes to free feed your dog so you don't have to be around, come back. But uh, like our dogs, we, we had that a few years ago where one was getting way overweight and we realized, oh, we have to feed them at 7.30 and at 4.30 and measure their right, cups yeah. and everything out. The other thing too, though, is exercise, isn't it? And making sure that they're getting the right yeah. amount of it, just like human beings. Uh, same way, you know, take them out for more walks. Or if you go out for, a lot of people in this area go for running and hiking and that's the best way to take your pets with them as for the rehab is concerned that is more towards the pets which they're having issues like arthritis some muscle wasting or some spinal issues things like that that's where it helps a lot to, as a rehab it's like a physical therapy you can say in a pets so uh, most important is just uh, if you need to change your pet's diet, go to something maybe that's a, a lower calorie type of food or making yeah. sure you're not feeding table scraps. Cause a lot of people like to do that. You know, I have guests who come over and they want to give my dog scraps. I'm way against that. Yeah. And uh, also just more exercise. Another question I have is um, dogs who have, as they get older, they get warts or, or moles yeah. and they're usually benign. But what if, like for example, this is, this is actually my dog and he has a lot of them and they're just, mm -hmm. he's 11 years old, but he he has one on his stomach that has looked like just like a mole, but lately it's it's looked like it's either uh, been I don't know if it's an, a broken, almost like maybe he's been licking it too much, or I'm not sure if it's from that or if it's maybe there's something else going on there. Is that something that because he licks it a lot? Like I don't know if it's just because it's there and he notices it. And sometimes they just get uh, compulsive behavior too. You know, once they start licking, they feel irritation. And that makes them keep on going back and looking at it. These type of warts, they are, if they're not bothering, I wouldn't touch them. I would just leave them because the dog's going to have it if it, they have tendency to get those warts. But if one of those is causing issue, it's very easy. You can do just a simple local block with lidocaine and take them off. It's not a major surgery where you have to do all that anesthesia, things like that. They, they can be just taken care of with a simple procedure. Okay, because this, this is kind of like a mole, but it's, there's not any weird colors or anything to it, but it did start to kind of break. The, the skin looks like it's broken, so that was what I was just looking at. So uh, other than that, we talked a little bit about the summer heat. It's not as bad uh, this week, but um, I think we want to talk a little bit, though, about, about making sure we don't, A, overexert our pets, and B, yeah. making sure that we're keeping them cool and, and clipped is, is the main thing. I also want to talk a little bit more about overweight dogs because that seems to happen a lot. Uh, after what i got to do is get to some traffic, uh, some commercials of traffic, and then we'll be right back more with Dr. Sandu, who we're speaking with from All Creatures Veterinary Center and Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital. We'll be right back after this. And we're back with Dr. Sandu from All Creatures Veterinary Center and All Creatures uh, and Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital. Now... Doctor, we were talking a little bit about overweight dogs in the summertime, uh, especially they would probably feel a lot more discomfort uh, as a result of being overweight and being hot. And what we can do, uh, I know we talked earlier uh, in one of our earlier sessions a couple weeks or last week about what we can do to keep them cool. But the other real danger for the summer isn't just that, it's snake bites, right? You're saying you're seeing a lot of snake bites. We do see a lot of snake bites and uh, sometimes we see like four or five a week. 
Now, what can be done uh, in the case of a snake bite? What's the first thing that, uh, what, a, first of all, we may not even see that, that our pets were bitten by a snake, even when we're out on a trail, because sometimes they'll come out, and once they do it, they're usually out of the way. What, what are the signs or symptoms that we can see, first and foremost, uh, if a dog's been attacked by a snake? Uh, first thing is always animal, they are like a little bit in shock, nervous, because that's not a common thing for them to have it. And then pretty soon you start seeing swelling on there, wherever they got bit on the legs, face, ears, uh, so once you start seeing swelling up there, where well, that's not a normal for any pet to have, and especially when you're not around them, you haven't seen it on a trail or at house. What we recommend these days is there's some vaccines for snake bite. These vaccines won't. It's not like they're gonna cure or they're gonna prevent that. You still need a medical attention, but at least it helps them pets to have some time before they are seen by the vet like it gives you good three to four hours period if the dog is a bit longer and you're not home but by the time you come home it's not a disaster or it's not like you're gonna lose your pet but at least you have some time and by the time you take to your vet we can do a lot over there and especially in light of a lot of homes now that back up to uh, wild brush and when yeah. it's hot, snakes are looking for water just like water in the Water and areas. some cool area too. So um, that, now what about also, is this the time of year where we maybe see a lot more um, attacks from animals such as coyotes and things like that as well because of the, the same situation where they a lot of times we'll see them come into the neighborhoods as well, right? They're going to come for food. Right. It's in a, in a dry season, and yeah, definitely they do all to come around the houses or the pen, pets are the main target over there. But we have seen coyote bites almost a year round between Lancaster Hospital and this area. It's not like it's more in summer or more in winter. Okay. So, mainly, uh, the main thing about a vaccine it does not prevent. Uh, uh, any snake bites or it does not uh, mean that you do not have to take your pets into the vet but it does buy a, a By time. decent amount of time yeah so that especially if you're up at the hills if you're up at the top of Towsley and your dog gets bitten it's still you know even if you're running the running still take, you, yeah. you know you're running with your dog it's going to take a, a quite a while to get down to get the car and actually get to the emergency clinic even there on on Lyons Avenue so that's a very important thing to consider especially if you're one who likes to take your pets on hikes on a regular basis and Towsley especially I've seen rattlesnakes all over there so that's a, 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 a very good thing to consider what else uh, as far as as this time of year what else are you seeing aside from snake bites anything else like foxtails or anything like that that we're looking at foxtail we as uh, foxtail yes especially after spring we do see a lot of foxtails and uh, we do see a lot of skin issues especially with the heat and the the pet and the pets they have a long hair and old pets when they are laying down in the shades or places different and they contaminate themselves we do see a lot of rashes on them too okay and then that's just you treat with either antibiotics or yeah just like clipping and antibiotics and taking care that way so again uh talking about your locations here at least in the santa clarita valley you've got all creatures emergency or veterinary center excuse me which is on lions avenue that is in the victorian buildings that is uh just it's between New Hall and Main Street. Now that's open 24 hours, correct? That's 24 hour hospital now. 24 hour hospital, you can so anytime because our pets don't get sick just between the hours of nine to five or even sometimes nine to seven and some of the other veterinary clinics are open. But the Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital, is that for more serious uh, issues or or is that just a another location that comes? It's not another, another location over there. We're open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And that's also for the commuters in the morning. They can leave their pets for a day and they can write down the issues or uh, tell our staff if they don't have a time to do exam or take a time off from your work. And, and the other thing too, uh, you were telling me that you were getting a new vet in that's an uh, exotic pet. Uh, you know, have, is that person now at your location? Uh, yeah, she's coming pretty soon. Uh, uh, but she already started helping us writing articles and there'll be a lot of things coming up in the community articles about exotic pets, birds. And defi yeah, defi I was going to say define exotic pets, the birds, what else? Uh, yeah, a lot of people have guinea pigs, um, we see turtles, we see iguanas, uh, 
almost everything what people so want to have it. They reptiles, bring it to us. Reptiles, reptiles is one of those. Uh, yeah. So and that's and those are things. A lot of people have a cockatoos, parrots, things uh, like that. And you know, we talk about how our affection are with our dogs and cats, but there are people with those types of pets who are just equally as aff as uh, affectionate with their animals and they have that relationship, and they want to make sure that, that their exotics are taken care of. Well, so yeah, we see it. a lot of bunnies at uh, all creature. People bring a lot of bunnies as a pets and. Uh, it's it's fun to work with them. Well, that's terrific. Yeah, that's and that's a big thing now with with bunnies as pets because they can actually be potty trained or house trained and things like that as long as they have something to gnaw on, uh, yeah. so that they don't gnaw on everything else in your house. They're doing pretty good. I know some people have had rabbits and, and just love them, just like they're their own little babies. So, Dr. Sandu from All Creatures Veterinary Center located on Lions Avenue, which is open 24 hours a day as an emergency hospital as well, and All Creatures or uh, Candy Country. Veterinary Hospital on Soledad Canyon in the Edwards uh, Cinema Complex there. Thank you so much for coming out. Always a pleasure, and uh, I wish you a great week. Thanks for having me.